It's one of the tensest moments in the world of sports. The soccer penalty shootout. At the end of extra time, if the score is still tied and a winner must be determined, both teams send their best five in for a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the opponent's goalie. Can we figure out their chances of making, say, three kicks? What about four or even all five? It wouldn't be Stat Center if we couldn't. I'm Robert Adut with yaymath.org in partnership with the Michelson 20MM Foundation. And tonight, we're bending it with binomial distributions. Because no American can truly call him or herself an expert in the world's most popular game, we're heading across the pond tonight for analysis from Britain's favorite son, David Beckham. David, welcome to Stat Center. Anything for the little ones, Robert. Now, David, when it comes to solving situational probabilities, are binomial distributions the answer? As sure as a red card means ejection, Robert, let's first establish the conditions for our binomial experiment. The prefix bi in binomial implies we only need two outcomes, each with a set probability of occurring. We can call those outcomes anything that makes sense, like success or failure, heads or tails, or even goal versus oh, bugger. And it's important to note that the chances of each of these two outcomes remain the same. For our shootout, let's assume each player has an 80% probability of scoring. In other words, the probability of a goal is always 80% or 0.8. And the probability of a miss or oh, slap is melted is always 20% or 0.2. Bravo, okay, so uh, talk to me about independence. Still a sore subject for us Brits to tell you the truth. But forgive and forget, I suppose. Uh, no, sorry, I meant independence as in an independent event. Oh, right. Love America, by the way. In any binomial experiment, it's imperative that each trial is an independent event. Like when we flip a coin, the coin's got no memory of prior flips. Each flip is independent of the other. Okay, now hold on, David. Uh, soccer players aren't exactly coins. They've got a memory. Well, it depends on how many times you've struck the ball with your head over the years, Robert. And crikey, it's footballers, if that's all right. Beckham knows best. You're right. Footballers in a game do have knowledge of prior kicks. But for our binomial experiment to work, we sort of have to pretend that each player has a sort of amnesia, if you will. In reality, the probability of making the kick is certainly affected by previous shots. There's that pressure if your team falls behind, and even a bigger pressure if it's a big game, like a World Cup final match. But for our purposes of studying binomial distribution, let's assume every kick is independent, all right? Bob's your uncle. Don't get shirty with me, Robert. Uh, so it appears that our penalty kick scenario has a fixed number of trials at five kicks. We have two possible outcomes, goal and all with each having an outcome as a set probability. 80% chance for a make and 20% chance for a miss. And lastly, we're assuming the trials are independent, that each kick Bob makes has no bearing on any of the other kicks. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. These are the three criteria that must be present in any binomial distribution. Now that we've successfully identified our distribution as binomial, let's explore the chances of making a certain number of kicks on goal and bringing home the World Cup. Now there's a formula for calculating the various outcomes, which I'm flashing here, but I personally believe it's much more important to understand what the formula does than the memorization of the formula itself. What can I say? I'm a footballer and I need every brain cell I've got left. In every binomial experiment, we need to establish what our inputs are. Those inputs, as we spoke of before, are the number of trials, n. In this case, n equals 
five trials. The probability of success per trial, or P. In this case, the chance of a successful penalty kick is 80%. So P equals 0.8. The number of successful outcomes we desire called X. Let's answer this for several values of X, starting with X equals three successful kicks, all the way up to all five successful kicks. So it turns out if you do an internet search for a binomial distribution calculator, you'll see that the calculator asks for the three same input values, N, P, and X. Amazing what with computers these days. Indeed. Our calculations show the probability of three kicks is about 20% likely. The probability of making four kicks is about 41% likely. And the probability of making all five kicks a superstar is around 33%. Remember, if the chance of making each kick was 80%, then that's equivalent to four out of five kicks. So it makes sense that the most likely outcome is four out of five kicks made, which is why it has the highest probability. All right, back to retirement and posh spice. Thanks, David. Keep calm, carry on, long live the queen. Uh, we certainly hope we've achieved the goal, or should I say goal, of explaining binomial distributions tonight. I'm Robert Adut for Stat Center. Keep it one standard deviation ahead of the curve, sports fans. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want.